Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. 2019 has been a lot of things, but one of the things that I'm looking for uh, going into the rest of this season is how the disease pressure plays out. We're going to talk about how to protect your soybeans with a soybean fungicide application today. We'll also talk about corn and some of the insects you may be seeing in your fields right now and what you can do about them and if you should be spraying. One other thing that's really stood out this year has been our weed of the week, especially in non-crop areas. We'll show you how to get this one under control later in the show, but first, Here's our farm basics. Out here, great yield starts with great weed control. That's why I choose the Roundup Ready Extend crop system, the system that makes the difference. Because only I know what it takes out here. Yield's what it's all for. But keeping my fields clean all season that's what it's all about. This is my field. We invite you to attend the Ag PhD Field Day. It's coming up on Thursday, July 25th. It's always the last Thursday in July. So today during our Farm Basics time, we're gonna talk just a little bit about some of the highlights of the 2019 Ag PhD Field Day. Well, first of all, Brian, new products. There are so many new things that are coming out that are going to be released in 2020 or shortly thereafter. And it's a great opportunity for you to get a first look at new traits that are coming out. You also see some of the new crop protection products and some fertility concepts that you may consider implementing for your farm. Well, it's not only that. We've got more equipment at the Ag PhD Field Day than we've ever had before. We are going to have a national launch of a new piece of equipment. You're gonna be super excited to see that. So we've got a lot of things on the technology side. Oh, and one other thing I should mention too with equipment, we do have a ride and drive area that's bigger than we've ever had before. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Well, another thing, when you, you talk about all these different pieces to your uh, cropping plan, how about putting it all together? We've got some of the best farmers from around the world, world record growers in a number of different crops that are going to be at our field day, talking about how do they implement these things on their farms and what are they doing to improve profitability? Yeah, so it's yield champions in corn, in soybeans and wheat, like we've traditionally had in the past, but also this year, barley sunflowers. We're even going to talk dry beans. We've got a yield champ, a national yield champ on sunflowers who's going to be there. And for all these great farmers, we've got roughly 15 or 20 of them. They're going to speak to you that day, but they also have plots that they've been managing all season long at the Ag PhD Field Day site. So not only can you listen to them, you can also see what they're doing in the field. Well, and it's not just you that's going to be at the field day. It's going to be lots of great farmers from around the country and around the world that you get to talk to all throughout the day. So as you're looking at something, you're going to be talking to a farmer from a few states away that's going to say, wow, what do you think about this? And what are you seeing in your area? And that information is really valuable, especially this year. Darren and I will also take you through the Ag PhD research plots, talk to you about some of the things that we're seeing out there that are working and some that aren't. We've also got a lot of great entertainment for you. We've got a kids area with a tremendous amount of things for the kids to do. We're gonna have an air show during the day. We've got Molly B and her band that's gonna be there. Uh, a number of different speakers that you can listen to in addition to just straight out ag topics. We've got drainage law and estate planning and grain marketing. So just a whole bunch of things that you can see and hear throughout the day. It'll be a lot of fun. It's just a one day event. It's free. So we certainly hope you can join us on Thursday, July 25th. Just go to agphd.com to learn more and to pre-register. One thing we hope you don't see at the Ag PhD Field Day is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? Increase your productivity with Hypro's dual react control system. The dual nozzle body design allows you to drive at the speed you want while maintaining the rate and droplet size you need. Hypro, helping you spray better. With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us because Case IH offered the first five axle design to give you more power to the ground, less berming and compaction, all to help you be more productive. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. 
there are a lot of steps to having a perfect season. Don't let your fertilizer plan be the step that trips you up. No matter when you apply fertilizer, no matter how, AgroLiquid has the experts and the products that'll help you move closer to your target and hit the bullseye. AgroLiquid moves you closer to your target. In 1949, Morton Buildings constructed our first machine storage building to establish our bond with the farming community. Since then, our relationship has grown and so have our product offerings. From the smallest specialized operation to the largest agricultural enterprise, we understand the needs of your business and continue to evolve to meet industry demands. Plus, when you build a Morton building, you're backed by the strongest warranty in the business. To learn more about the Morton Advantage, visit mortonbuildings.com. At Estes Performance Concaves, we know how valuable your time is at harvest. That's why we designed the new XPR Concave System. The XPR System is the number one performance concave system on the market, surpassing the rest in both speed and efficiency, ensuring every last grain from your field gets into your tank. Plus, XPR Concaves work for all row crops. No more changing concaves, meaning you have less downtime. Take back your bushels this harvest. Get Estes Performance Concaves in your combine today. One of the most important things you can do often in your soybean crop is to use a foliar fungicide. There are plant health benefits and also certainly for disease control. So today we're going to talk about your best choices and why you may consider spraying a fungicide in your soybeans. All right, let's first talk about the disease protection and to get good disease protection with any fungicide in any crop, you have to be out there in front of it. Fungicides are preventative products, and I realize a lot of the sales and marketing people will tell you, oh, this one has really good curative properties, but let's be honest here, the curative properties are for, hey, an infection is just beginning, maybe on one or two percent out there. Yeah, we can stop that. But if you've got an infection like on 50 percent of your leaf area, you're done. It's over. You've got to be out in front of that. So when we're anticipating when we're going to see disease, we have to look for when are the stressful times in our plant's life and when are diseases most commonly occurring in our area. Well, with soybeans, once they hit the reproductive stages of growth, that's where there's a lot of stress on those plants. There's a heavy nutrient demand. They're really working hard to produce seed that's when you can get an infection and right now is the time you have to protect yourself from disease. Now when we talk about getting the most out of your fungicide, Darren said you got to spray early, you got to be preventative, but the other big thing to understand is that fungicides don't move well in the plant. Basically the leaf area that you touch, that's what's protected. If there are new leaves that come out, they're unprotected, and if you don't have good coverage in the beginning, well, you just didn't protect your plant hardly at all. So the important thing to understand is you've got to use a good amount of spray pressure, smaller spray droplets. It's whole different than if you're spraying, let's say, dicamba post-emerge. We want small droplets here, lots of water, and really great coverage. Now when it comes to specific diseases, we look at white mold as one where R1, or first flower out in the field, is the optimum time to start your treatment program because that white mold fungus is going to get in through those dried up blooms. So as those blooms get pollinated and drop off, uh, that's an open spot where the disease can get into the plant. So getting good coverage up and down the plant's important. Now the good thing too at R1, especially when we're in the northern part of the country, our soybeans aren't that big yet. So we can get pretty good coverage throughout the entire plant. When we get soybeans that are waist high or shoulder high, it's really tough to get down through that canopy very far. That's why I think this first application of fungicide is going to be important. Now, I mentioned the first application. For many of you, you may be saying, wait a second, I may not have used a fungicide before, or maybe I don't use one every year. Now you're telling me I have to use it more than once per season. Well, like Brian had said, fungicides don't move around in the plant much, so as we get new growth, we may need to protect that too. All right, let's talk specifically about white mold. If you have a white mold issue or you're concerned about that, Endura is the best product. Unfortunately, it's $37 an acre, so you're not gonna wanna spray that everywhere 
only where you feel like you have a bad white mold issue. Then you're going to want to come back two to maybe three weeks later with something like Dolaro that's got some proline in there. Then follow up with Acropolis maybe two or three weeks after that. Acropolis has the active ingredients found in Topsin and Domark. So those are the best white mold fungicides. There's also the new Miravis Neo that you could try that we believe will have some decent white mold activity. The thing is we'd like you to use multiple modes of action if at all possible. With Endura that's an SDHI. With Proline, that's a triazole. Then you've got the other chemical family is the strobilurin family. That'd be like headline, quadris. Usually the strobes are not very good on white mold, but we like throwing it in there anyway for plant health. We'll talk more about plant health in just a minute. But before we do, usually with white mold, we're at R1. Also with SDS, where we want you to spray at R1. Fortix is the only product that's labeled for use at R1 to suppress sudden death syndrome. All right, if you just want to spray once and you say, look, all I'm after is just some general diseases and maybe this plant health, well, then we'd suggest spraying at R2, maybe just at the beginning of R3. So that would be full flower and very first pod. So Brian mentioned plant health, and when we're talking this R2 to R3 application, that's what we're going for for the most part. So when you think about that, the strobal urine family has been the go-to plant health products in the industry. We think about Headline and where it all started with, but there are a lot of strobal urine products. Now we've got the SDHI family as well, and we've seen some added plant health benefits from that too. So we're seeing more growers gravitating towards the two and three mode of action products, whether they're going for disease control and want to protect themselves from resistance, or they're going for plant health benefits and trying to get even a little longer lasting effect. You've probably heard this plant health thing before and you said, ah, wait, plant health? What, what is that exactly? Well, specifically there are three things. What we're seeing is less ethylene in the plants that have been sprayed with fungicide. What that means is that ethylene is kind of a stress hormone in the plant. It's going to make the plant finish earlier or like Darren and I always used to talk about premature death. Okay, if the plant lives a little longer and it lives healthier longer, usually we have more yield, so less ethylene there. The next thing is you're going to see more antioxidants in those plants. Finally, you're going to see cooler temperatures. Now that we have a lot of quick measuring tools where you can sense plant temperature, just sense that temperature where you've sprayed versus where you have not sprayed. And you will usually find that it's a little bit cooler in that canopy, which is a good thing in the heat of the summer where you've sprayed a fungicide. So those are the reasons why we're seeing some yield gain out of the plant health benefits spraying in soybeans. Specifically, some of our favorite products for plant health have been Preax or Triva Pro, Stratego Yield, but there are many others out there too. The big thing is to spray a fungicide. We think it's a no-brainer in soybeans. We've seen good gains just year in and year out. A lot of growers are also using this timing to scout for insects and add an insecticide right in. You can certainly do that. Spray coverage is very important for insecticides too, so the same spray tips would be optimum for both of those types of products. Darren was just mentioning spray coverage. Well, spray coverage is really important if you want to control our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you why coming up later in the show. Invisible, invasive, underestimated, nematodes are stealing over 10% of yields, and current protection methods aren't enough. But a breakthrough seed treatment technology controls nematodes when they attack. Now offering Nemastrike technology. It provides broad spectrum control from the start and stays in the root zone as plants grow. Take back your bushels with Nemastrike technology. Strike where nematodes attack. Do you feel like there's never enough time to get everything done before planting? The window for spring work is quick and unforgiving. Give yourself the upper hand with the ProTail High Performance High Speed Disc. More and more farmers agree the ProTail is the right tool for spring field conditions and heavy residue management. Zero maintenance bearings, independent disc technology, oversized pins and bushings allow the ProTail to handle whatever field or conditions you can throw at it. Degelman High Performance Equipment. At Estes Performance Concaves, we know how valuable your time is at harvest. That's why we designed the new XPR Concave System. The XPR System is the number one performance concave system on the market, surpassing the rest in both speed and efficiency, ensuring every last grain from your field gets into your tank. 
Plus, XPR Concaves work for all row crops. No more changing concaves, meaning you have less downtime. Take back your bushels this harvest. Get Estes Performance Concaves in your combine today. Your planter is the single most important piece of equipment on your farm. Because without a uniform stand, you can't reach maximum yield. That's why Harvest International set out to design a planter that takes advantage of the newest innovations in planter technology. Built tough for high speed and integrated with the latest precision enhancements, Harvest International planters ensure every seed you plant today puts more in your bin at harvest. Harvest International, planting the future. Tough, precise, efficient. Strip tillage with the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm. Learn more at soilwarrior.com slash agphd. In soybeans over the last few years, just about every farmer is paying attention to insects like soybean aphids, bean leaf beetles, grasshoppers, and spraying on a regular basis. We don't see as much insect spraying in corn, but today we're going to talk about why you may consider it this year on your farm. When you think about corn, a lot of times we're just concerned about weeds and fertility. Weeds and fertility. If we get those two pieces right, we're going to do okay. And I agree with you, those things are really important. However, we're seeing a resurgence of insects late season in corn. Many, many of those bugs could be controlled with BT products that we've got that where some farms are choosing to go conventional corn. Maybe you've done that on your farm or maybe you've gone away from smart stacks traits and he said, no, I'm not going to pay for that. I'm just going to go with above ground protection. And you think, well, I'm covered above ground, right? Not necessarily. If you had rootworm pressure, for example, you may start seeing those adult rootworm beetles out in your fields. So it's really important that you're scouting because even if you've stayed with some of the traits and you've stayed with your normal program, your neighbors haven't. And that's going to mean more pressure for you. All right. I don't know if I'm going to agree with Darren on this resurgence of all bugs, but I would say certain insects, yes, we're seeing more of them. Corn borers, for example. Back just a few years ago, almost everybody was using the traded products. So I believe we were having better mortality out there. We were killing more corn borers. Well, when people started going back to conventional corn, that's now meaning we are seeing more corn borers. So let's go back to 30 years ago, and here was our advice. We would always say, make sure you're scouting early for corn borers, about the time the corn is knee high, and then you're gonna take a look again a little later on in the season. So in the Midwestern United States, we usually have two generations of corn borers. So if you've got conventional corn, you don't have any trait out there to kill those corn borers, you may need to spray insecticide. The good news is insecticides are dirt cheap. You're gonna spend a couple bucks. Problem is, probably going to have to call a plane in for the late application, so there goes maybe $8 an acre. But anyway, the point is, you got to be scouting for these bugs, and you want to catch them before those corn borers actually bore into the stalk. Once they've bored into the stalk, now you've got a real problem. You can't get in there to control that insect. I mentioned corn rootworm beetles just a minute ago, and when you think about that, they're not going to bore into the stalk. They're going to be on the outside of the plant, but what they will do is chew off silks. They will affect your plant above ground, and many people say, well, they aren't going to cause any problem. They're more of next year's problem as they lay eggs. Well, they, they are a problem for next year if they do lay eggs, but this year I've seen fields where they've clipped all the silks off the ears, or they've clipped enough of those silks off that, that you got poor pollination on ears. That's a substantial yield loss right now. And it's very, as Brian mentioned, inexpensive to control these bugs. So if you see rootworm beetles out in your field, that means you had some rootworm pressure feeding on your roots. You've already lost yield. Don't let them hit this crop for a second time. Wipe them out with a, a cheap pyrethroid insecticide. The key thing with almost all these insects is to spray early. Like the corn rootworm beetles, if you can get them early enough, well, then they haven't had a chance to mate and lay eggs for next year. So if you plant continuous corn, well, now you're going to have less rootworm pressure next year if you just get the adults this year before they get the chance to lay eggs. A couple other insects that I wanted to mention today, 
corn leaf aphids, and then, it's not really an insect, but spider mites. Both of these can be problematic. A lot of people don't spray for them, but I would just tell you, as the corn price goes higher, and as you have good yield potential, well, there's more need to spray because you're hitting economic thresholds. In other words, you can justify treatment. If you're going to go out and control these corn leaf aphids, usually you're going to see them on the tassel. So be scouting right at tasseling time you're going to have to have a lot of aphids. It's probably going to be 100 to maybe even 400 per plant, but if you do see those corn leaf aphids, you absolutely could spray. With spider mites, there's no real established threshold, but I would just say the most important leaf on the corn plant is the ear leaf. So if you start seeing a bunch of speckling on that ear leaf, damage from spider mites, you probably should spray. Let's talk about the treatment options really quick here. If you've got spider mites in the upper Midwest, typically bifenthrin is going to do a good job at a pretty low price. So that would be our recommendation, but that doesn't work everywhere. In some areas, we've got mites that are resistant to that, and you have to use one of the more expensive miticides. You've got Oberon and Zeal and just a number of different products that you could choose from. Hey, let's not forget about Lorsban. Lorsban does work in many areas as well, and that's pretty inexpensive too. And then the other thing is if you just have aphids or you just have corn rootworm beetles, you can get by with one of the cheaper pyrethroid type products. Uh, we like uh, the, the Lambda Psi type products. Uh, they do a nice job at a low price. Darren talked about these cheap pyrethroids. We're talking about two bucks an acre. That's all it costs. So I guess I would just again encourage you be scouting in your fields. If you see sometimes even lower levels of insects, you might have enough. Just check the economic thresholds, run the numbers for your farm, and consider spraying. And one other thing you definitely want to consider spraying is our weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop it coming up next. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt in a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. Out here, great yield starts with great weed control. That's why I choose the Roundup Ready Extend crop system, the system that makes the difference, because only I know what it takes out here. Yield's what it's all for, but keeping my fields clean all season, that's what it's all about. This is my field. Invisible, invasive, underestimated, nematodes are stealing over 10% of yields, and current protection methods aren't enough. But a breakthrough seed treatment technology controls nematodes when they attack. Now offering Nemastrike technology. It provides broad spectrum control from the start and stays in the root zone as plants grow. Take back your bushels with Nemastrike technology. Strike where nematodes attack. There are a lot of steps to having a perfect season. Don't let your fertilizer plan be the step that trips you up. No matter when you apply fertilizer, no matter how, AgroLiquid has the experts and the products that'll help you move closer to your target and hit the bullseye. AgroLiquid moves you closer to your target in 1949, Morton Buildings constructed our first machine storage building to establish our bond with the farming community. Since then, our relationship has grown, and so have our product offerings. From the smallest specialized operation to the largest agricultural enterprise, we understand the needs of your business and continue to evolve to meet industry demands. Plus, when you build a Morton building, you're backed by the strongest warranty in the business. To learn more about the Morton Advantage, visit mortonbuildings.com. The Guardian Air Twin Spray Nozzle from Hypro produces a twin spray pattern with air inducted droplets for superior coverage, even in dense canopies. Be effective and efficient with your spray application this season with the Guardian Air Twin. Hypro, helping you spray better. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Corteva AgriScience, Agriculture Division of Dow DuPont. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough, but 
we're tougher. With unrivaled weed control. Reduced drift. And near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> Our Weed of the Week is a biennial, it's common mullen. Well, it's one that you've probably seen, and maybe you didn't realize what it is, because oh, there's just a few here and there, but it's one that can spread quickly because it can produce up to 100,000 seeds per plant. So we want to get common mullen under control. Yeah, the good news, though, is common mullen does not like shade. So if you just can choke it out by having a great crop out there, pretty easy. But like Darren said in pastures, okay, let's say you have cattle out grazing. Well, obviously you're not going to choke out common melon then. So we've got to get it under control. I prefer to get it under control in that rosette stage. Uh, that's the easiest time to get it killed because once you get to the bolt stage where it's putting that big tall upper plant on, it's got a huge root system underneath it. It's going to take more product and tougher products to get it under control. Out in pastures, we'd suggest using distinct 2,4-D, dicamba, any of those cheaper products will work just fine. My favorite though, Brian, is Chaparral, and I still like having some of these products with either Milestone or Tordine in there to get down into that root system on the biennials and perennial weeds. Yep, I agree with you. Chaparral's probably a little better, but usually I can take care of it with the other products as long as you use a good, strong rate. Turning to corn, we'd suggest Verdict Down because that's got Sharpen in there and it has good burn down and residual. Follow up post emerge with Status or Roundup, just about anything will work there post in corn. In wheat, I like Sharpen Down as well. Use a couple ounces of Sharpen, wipe it out early. That's the best way. Uh, post emerge though in the wheat, I'd probably go with a strong rate of Husky. Then when we get to soybeans, use the three pre program that we talk about all the time. Then follow up post emerge with either Roundup, Dicamba, Liberty, or 2,4-D, depending on the crop that you've got. That's all time we have for our Weed of the Week Common Mullen, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us because Case IH offered the first five axle design to give you more power to the ground, with less berming and compaction, all to help you be more productive. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. Time for a new pump on your farm? I'll discuss something new that you'll want to consider in today's Iron Talk. The windows for getting jobs done on the farm seem to narrow each season. Take spraying, for example. There are only so many days where the wind is light, it's not raining, and the temperature is just right. If you have a problem with your sprayer, it not only costs you time, but it can absolutely cost you in yield loss. A study by Southern Illinois University found that up to 4.8 bushels of corn yield per acre can be lost for every inch of weed growth. With pigweeds growing as much as two to three inches in a single summer day, you can quickly see how much avoiding a breakdown is worth. My question today is how often are you servicing your spray pump? I can speak for our farm that the pump is often taken for granted until there's a problem. And that's why so many farmers are investing in the new Pentair Hypro Force Field pumps. What's different? Well, this technology offers a centrifugal pump that utilizes a barrier fluid to keep the mechanical seal lubricated and cool to prevent failure. The seal chamber is self-regulating and actively maintains the proper pressure without need for inspection, maintenance, or input from the operator. This means more time being productive in the field and a better chance that you'll kill your weeds before they kill your yield potential. It also takes away stress as the pump can run dry, allowing you to apply the full tank without mechanical seal failure so you get a full clean out at the end of the day. A great rainy day job this season may be to upgrade your pump and save time and money on repair and maintenance going forward. The Pentair Hypro Force Field eliminates downtime, leading to more productivity and more yield for you. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. That's all the time we have for today's show, but before we go, we want to invite you to check out the Ag PhD Insider magazine. You can go to agphdinsider.com to learn more. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.